Hello, my name is Aitor Gomez. I'm with the University of Waikato. And I'm going to try to get you to get you excited about machine learning for data streams and some of the challenges that were not discussed yet, like, yeah, uh, that were not discussed yet by Yun Singh and Albert. So first, when we are talking about static machine learning or machine learning for batch data, we have this like static data set that you can have multiple passes over it. Sometimes you do more multiple passes than you should and you have random access to any instance that you want and that's uh, usually the, the normal process. When we are talking about machine learning for data streams, then we have this continuous flow of data that we have to keep updating our models. We don't have access to very old data. Sometimes we don't even want to have access to this old data because they are not useful anymore. And we do have some strict time and memory uh, constraints because we don't have infinite memory and infinite time to process them. Now, <coughs> oops, up, up, yeah. so if I were to summarize this here, if I'm creating a model for batch data or static data, the output is a trained model. It can be a function that we can deploy in production. Very, um, very common nowadays, it's still challenging. If we are deploying a model for streaming data, then we have this learnable model or this uh, thing that is running continuously in production, which adds much more complexity to the deployment phase. Now, I'm gonna focus on two or three specific challenges here. In one side, we have the computational challenge. I'm not gonna talk much about it. We have the other challenges that are changes over time. And you seeing did talk a lot about this, and I'm gonna try to talk in, um, from another perspective. So specifically, I'm gonna talk a little bit about delayed partial data. So in streaming, we usually have immediate labeling, or we assume that we have immediate labeling, which means after I make a prediction, before I make the next prediction for the next instance, I already get the feedback for that instance. So I can immediately update my model. That's very nice. People produce a lot of papers with that. I did some as well. Uh, sometimes it doesn't happen in reality. You know, reality is always getting in the way of our research. Um, now, when this happens, when we have this non-negligible delay between receiving the label and actually doing it, then we need to do something else. We need to take this into account. Also, concept drift and label availability. You might not have uh, all the labels to do the, this prediction. So if you don't have the immediate labeling setting, then doing concept drift detection is much harder. And finally, the deployment of the models, as I mentioned, is much more difficult. Like you need to convince a lot of engineers to put together something that is running in production and they don't really like to do it. Um, so in here, like we have the happy path, so immediate labeling, everything is supervised, and the not so happy path where you have like unsupervised and we have like semi-supervised. The nice thing about Unsupervised is that some things that you cannot represent uh, because it doesn't make sense to represent with supervised learning, they work very well there. With supervised, we have some another um, spectrum of things that works. And with semi-supervised, usually it doesn't, nothing works. Uh, but we can put it all together and then um, try to re, like, get some information from the structure of the data without actually having access to the labels. So dealing with the delayed label data, you have to take into account the delay, how you're going to do it. It's still kind of an open research uh, challenge. That's why this is called challenges. Leverage the unlabeled data. You can either use SSL, like same supervised, or active learning. Active learning is a bit weird for streaming data because you might not have the feedback in time if it relies on a person. To appropriately benchmark these algorithms is also a good idea to test your algorithms First, what if I don't use the unlabeled data if we're talking about same supervised learning and just train on the supervised, um, on the labeled data? What do I get? Um, label availability, it's like ideally we should be able to detect changes in the data even if we don't have the labeled data. This could cover the case where it's unsupervised or delayed labeled as well. Now for deployment, um, Traditionally, we have this uh, deploying machine learning models is not trivial, even nowadays, uh, even for batch data. For deploying for streaming data, it's even worse because the changes 
over time, then there is no human input and some companies, they really like to have control over the model because the model might be uh, maybe accurate, but then acting in a weird way. So uh, sometimes people don't go for it because of that. And finally, thank you, that's my contact and this is my favorite paper about challenges. <laughs>